It's the first one that the animals want. Oh, it's a spaz guy. This is the third documentary I've been in, by the way. Third documentary. Maybe I should count my fingers. Third documentary. One day I got drunk, woke up the next day and I had a fucking blog to write. No, you, you just go out, get drunk, you take some photos. Hey, nice photos. Hey, those are really good photos. Take more of them. So you take a shitload of photos. And, ha, you write something funny. Yeah, write a review out of that. You start off with a couple of words, then a few more words, and a few more words. So you don't all of a sudden go, oh, 3,000 words. It's originally just my excuse to get drunk. He's blowing his entire week to justify his weekend. But, you know, it saves a nine to five job. I don't mind going about sleep because of doing what I like to do, which is basically just taking the piss. I started a practical joke about four years ago, and I'm fooling more and more people. I'm not a journalist. You can't take me seriously, but people do. Having a few beers, getting pissed, like pretty much any other person in the crowd, I just have a really elaborate worded blog after it. I'm sort of a dissertation from the average pisshead. Am I moving my hands around wildly enough? People said I talk like an Italian. I don't know how, where that came from. I don't think I'm Italian. <laughs> That's his wank. I'm the only person writing it. I'm the only person who's running the whole show. So if I want to blow a night off, I just go, yeah, fuck it, blow the night off. If I just want to not review a band, just talk about, you know, sock puppets, rewrite it, just run my own show. I can be that belligerent asshole just goes, nah, fuck you, man. I want to take a night off, you know. So it's that power. On the other hand, I don't get paid shit, but then again, who in the music industry does get paid shit? Nobody rip it up except maybe the higher ups get paid. So you're just doing it for the fuck of it. And I mean, I don't have to worry about journalistic integrity for one thing. I've started a joke and it gets funnier the more people think it's legitimate. This is like nine o'clock in the morning for me, by the way. It's just it's too early. It's, it's 4.40, yeah. I know I've destroyed a few bands' careers. <laughs> I think I've just prematurely stopped a few. Which, if you've actually seen some of the bands which I give really bad ratings to, is probably a good thing. They may be watching. The main reason people are coming out is to catch all the DJs and shit, so... That's doing more than I'm doing, or maybe Facebook is doing more than I'm doing, or maybe I'm just turning at the same time. I don't know how much of an effect I'm actually having, but I like to think I'm actually part of the flame. I'm, I'm encouraging the binge-drinking epidemic. I like to think that, you know, it beats watching Australian Idol and going, Ooh, and hanging around shopping centres. I mean, that's not music. Any person can start a band, literally any person, even people with no talent. I've seen plenty of those. I gotta drink more coffee. I don't know if I ramble more because I'm on camera or if I ramble less. I don't want to call what I'm doing journalism because, well, it may be journalism. It's a bit of a cop-out to say if you're writing and all of a sudden it's online, it's not journalism anymore. The whole big media of music journalism is taking a massive slide. All these magazines are trying to leap online and make them sort of, you know, relevant. They're trying to do Twitter feeds. You'd read it like Rolling Stone and go, oh my get that album and then a couple of weeks later you buy it now it's kind of like you hear about a you hear about an artist and like somebody passes the message you just download it in two seconds most of the actual legitimate stuff is done by basic music bloggers and these are people who have no qualifications they're basic music fans and they range from people who actually have a wording and ability to actually write to people who have no fucking clue but they're enthusiastic which i think is always good I do try to in some way make whatever I write reasonably well worded. I mean, you could say you just hate something, but you gotta sort of back it up. And I do that cheap sort of thesaurus sensibility where I compare every artist to maybe three or four other artists. Oh, they kind of sound like Interpol, a mixed of Radiohead, a mixed of TV on the radio. The fact that I have no word limit, word limit, word limit, word limit means I can just get away with a lot more. And since I don't have record labels hounding me, I mean, I could just tell them to fuck off, because, you know, what do I care? I mean, I have no discipline. I, I'm self-disciplined. That kind of journalism may work a bit better than something like a, a sort of a cold, steady-state magazine. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes, I wouldn't say payola. A lot of little record labels going, oh, no, you should promote this artist now. That's the good thing about blogs, is you can find your niche and run with that. I suppose we're more the zines. It is an element of trust. How much you're willing to trust this publication to tell you what you want to go after. It's good just when an Adelaide artist actually even releases an album. I like an, an album that sort of, it takes you just on this massive, epic, sort of experience character arc. If you know a band, and they play with another band, then you know that band, and then you've got basically dudes you can get drunk with every weekend. Fuck, I know, I've actually been here for 15 years. I used to see uni lecturers here, that was, they probably still do that. Like, 
You can actually go back to the archives. I might have to delete half of those entries though. It's me rambling about how shit more and order is. But I had this gag every weekend. I would actually keep a tally of how many drinks I'd have. One night I had six or seven Cooper's Pale Owls, you know, a couple of sparklings. You get a hot dog named after me by accident. And you know, I started chucking a few photos of live bands and I'm not a photographer. I mean, I am a visual artist, so I had that working for me. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. I think I had a talent scout from Rolling Stone magazine. I don't know where the fuck that came from. You know, Chino Marina from Deftones. Apparently she was his drug dealer and one of the head photographers for Rolling Stone or something. And that was kind of an impetus. I thought, fuck, if Rolling Stone has an interest in this pissy little blog I've got, I've got to, you know, up the stakes a little bit. I had the same contact, which was going to jump to Metal Hammer magazine. I don't know anything about metal, besides the fact that, you know, look like sort of Scandinavian rock god. And that fell through two weeks before the contract signed because she mysteriously became pregnant, freaked out, and then gave me a free camera. Adelaide needs these fucked up characters. You should buy into this and support Adelaide music. No, I don't. I don't give a fuck about Adelaide music. Music, unless I can relate to it, you know. This dweeb makes this music. How's this happen? I don't know, but listen to the music. He's the dweeb. Look at this, look at this freak. He's just a complete freak, but he makes this shit. And it's just, ugh, what the hell? It starts off as an excuse to get drunk, and it pretty much remains an excuse to get drunk, but you're just legitimizing a whole lot of infrastructure that pops out of it. If you live way in the northern or southern suburbs, it's like 50 bucks a taxi to get home. You gotta give an incentive for somebody to go see something small, local, fermenting a weird. This is music before the PR machine takes over and, you know, smooths over all the edges. They could be complete idiots and the stuff that come up is amazing. Life, that's what music is. It's not, you know, shiny little bits of plastic. I, I say that and I've got an iPod full of shit. We are a ghetto, but I mean, that adds to the flavor of it. I'm doing in spite of the fact that I will probably never ever get any money for doing this. And eventually I'll sell out and do reviews on Lady Gaga the rest of my life until I shoot myself in 18 months time. I just leave the house and I'll bump into 20 people I know. I think of blogging every weekend in, in the fear that if I stop blogging, it'll disappear. I don't know, I don't think there's too many pubs that can actually claim that they just do music. I know the Great Assembly does. If you, if you ever feel jaded about the music scene at all in Adelaide, just go, go to the Great Assembly on a Monday. It's about people making music. It's not about, you know, money and movements and demographics and, you know, getting this many people through the door and this geek sold out two weeks ago. I mean, that's great when it happens, but, you know, it's, it's more about the people who make music. They're in front of you and they're making music. It's live. Was that answering the question? I can't even remember what the question was. I think I actually ran out of words to say for once. <laughs> Good luck editing this.